Dobry wieczór. Witamy wszystkich bardzo serdecznie w kolejnym odcinku programu Labanda na pobandzie.pl. Ja nazywam się Krzysiek Załaga, a dziś mam bardzo młodego gościa, jak Państwo widzicie, ponieważ moim gościem jest zawodnik Betard Sparty Wrocław, Mikkel Andersen. Hi Mikkel, how are you doing? All good, thank you. What's the weather like in Denmark now? Uh, not so good. It's raining all day and I think it's going to be like this the whole week, so yeah. It's not like uh, when it's in the speedway season, so it's heading a bit more towards the winter time now. Yeah, that's true. And also that's why you are doing some other activities than, than connected with motorsport. Today you are just after the boxing training. Yeah, I just uh, went to the boxing training in the, with my Danish club, Wojens. We do the boxing training in the winter, so, so that was earlier today and uh, yeah. Now I have time for this. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and I, I need to thank you for accepting this invitation, but also congratulate you uh, because, uh, yeah, the season that you just had, 2024, I bet you didn't expect it to go that well. No, uh, I have to be honest, no, not at all. Uh, my expectations for the season were just to try to qualify for the under-19s because that was sort of my level at the first first moment of the season so but I always joked a bit with my dad about ah, I'm going to qualify from the uh, SGB2 and he was like oh, no chance and but then we we qualified and uh, it's just been amazing season even though I didn't win any titles but we learned a lot and quite happy with it yeah so probably the biggest happiness is proving your dad wrong Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but maybe let's try to sum up this also, yeah, because the SGP2 that you qualified for, uh, yeah, in the first tournament in Malila, you were fifth, so you already woken up some hopes maybe for the podium, then in Riga, third place, and then the final round in Torun, basically, if Matthias Polestad wasn't that good in the final, you'd have a bronze medal. Yeah, it was a bit unlucky in the, in the final in Torun, but... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's just how it is. I, I could have gone to the final as well, but then then I have been for it. But so it was my own fault that I didn't get the bronze. So, but in as you say, in Molila, I was number five after the first round and what I didn't expect, expect at all from uh, that meeting. So just to be honest, I... I didn't I didn't think it was going to go that well in the first season so and then uh, in Riga was just unbelievable I could have won the thing but uh, just <laughs> unlucky in the last corner but yeah it was a good season in the SGB2 Of course, and I think the biggest or the most important thing for you is like Matthias Polestad had his last season uh, and you've got five more <laughs> Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, I have uh, have many years to come. So now I just proven that I'm here and I'm not to joke with. So uh, they have to look out for the next five years. They're gonna. They, they need to watch out for the number ninety seven. <laughs> right, but it wasn't just SGP two where you were so successful. It's it's also the Polish Extra League when you got the contract with Better at Sparta Wrocław, and you managed also to have a debut in the best league in the world, so in the Polish Extra League, which was which wasn't that bad. No, no, I have to yeah, it's unbelievable that I got the chance because it was just after the on Tuesday I had my first uh, under twenty four, which I scored my uh, first maximum in. So after that, they just called me to a meeting and asked if they wanted to do the extra league on Friday. So um, I'm glad I didn't say no to that because it was just an unbelievable experience to have that with uh, so many people and just the team and all the staff around was just unbelievable to uh, experience in my first year. So I didn't, didn't expect that at all. But you just said you are glad you didn't say no. Did you have the thoughts to say no? Uh, you were you thinking it's too early, or was it the dad again? No, it's like it was actually that didn't. He wanted it to be my choice because he don't want to p put pressure on me or anything. So everything we do is, is like he asked me, and then us make the final decision if I want to do it or not. 
but I was, I was like a bit, I f- thought it was a bit too early in the start, but then when you like thought it over a bit, I was like, why I didn't, you need to take the chance while it's there. So if I said no, maybe I didn't get the chance and without the experience I could have missed in this one was, I'm glad I didn't say no to that. Yeah. Obviously, that's why I was asking you, né? because uh, you never know when it's going to be the next change. So that's why probably it was reasonable to to have said yes. And uh, yeah, what did you feel before this meeting? Obviously, I was a bit nervous because I've never raced in front of so many people. But as soon as you get the helmet on, you don't like you don't re- realize that you're in front of that many people. So. So after the first heat, it was like I was a bit stressed before the well, was like nervous before the first heat. But after after the first heat, you could relax a bit more in the in the race and think clear again. Because in the first heat, I was quite nervous and had a bit of goosebumps. I think. Yeah, probably probably you don't remember too many things from from your first heat. Yeah, I, I do, but. It's just hard to describe because it's so special feeling. So, yeah, and we've mentioned already twice your father. I think it's no secret to anyone because you are known for for years now, like a son of Brian Anderson. Uh, but yeah, his role needs to be special in your life because okay, first of all, he is a former speedway rider. Secondly, your father, and thirdly, the the speedway tuner. So he knows a lot about the engines. And how important is it to have somebody like this in your team? It's definitely important. It's he's like my second hand. I can I can say I have him for everything and yeah. Right now before I got my mechanic I did all my equipment myself. I did for f- three years now I think. I did all my own stuff. So uh, but I obviously I couldn't do that in the same level as I do now if I didn't have him because he's so smart on that part. I can <laughs> And when obviously it's easier when I have my dad to make the engine. So, and because he like understands my level of like aggression on the track, so it's easier for him to build the engine that fits for me because he works with me every day or is with me every day, of course. But, but are you just using the, the the engines from your father, or you are testing also some other tuners? I have I bought one engine this year from Kowalski that I used in Torun. Uh, And then I used it in the on the or on the twenty four final in Ruslov. Because I only got it from the last part of the season. How did you like it? It was similar to the stuff I have now, so it's it's not that different, but um I think we make some changes and it will be perfect, I think. Right. Okay. And yeah, in your box, it's it's not just your father; it's also your brother-in-law. I've heard in one of the interviews. Is it like still like this? N- not anymore. He was uh, usually in like in the first start of the season, and then after the first or first, I think it was three months ago, in the start of August, I got um, oh no. Yeah, after the second extra league match in Leicester, I got my first professional mechanic, uh, Matteo Stuchest. He works for me now. Hey, that's that's interesting, yeah, because he used to be a speedway rider not so long ago. He used to ride U24 yeah. for Motor Lublin. So Matteo is now in your team. Yeah, I think, yeah, and hopefully I have him for next year as well. Okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool to know that uh, people from Ribnik are now not vanishing from uh, uh, from the map of the speedway. And if we are, if we are already at this topic, uh, I think everything fits with you and Sparta Wrocław, apart from your colors, <laughs> because they are red and yellow, and you are known for your black and green, and that's why you would fit maybe Falubas more or maybe Ribnik. Yeah, that that doesn't quite matter that much. It uh, is, of course, I like the green and uh, black, but uh, that's that's not the big part of it. If you're not uh, happy in the club or anything, so for me, it doesn't matter how ugly the suit is or how how it looks. Just uh, if the club is good, then then it's there. There I'm riding. 
Right. Yeah, but what are your expectations for the next season at Sparta? Are you focusing on U24 Extra League or you want to be loaned to, to some other league? Or you are still hoping that it's going to be, you know, a possibility for a foreign rider to be a U21 rider? Yeah, uh, at the moment I haven't I haven't signed no contract next year, uh, but it's very close. So I don't know which club I'm riding for next year in Poland. That's not 100%, but... Uh, The plan is sort of that I ride uh, under 24 league, and then I so I would like to ride the KLZ league, the what's second, the third league, or a, a third level, let's say Krajowa Liga Zuzla. This is the one, and there yeah. are only like five or six teams there, and you would like to get some experience there. Yeah, because then I have two meetings in Poland a week, and that would probably give me more experience. So. Right now, I'm hopefully trying to find a club in uh, that league. So uh, that would be nice if I can get one there. Yeah, that's that's also possible because probably everybody knows you. But probably, and uh, I'm touching a sensitive topic, maybe probably you are not the cheapest rider. And you know, these uh, clubs in the third league, they are quite poor normally. Yeah, I've so heard, but also some riders get the get a quite good pay I heard but uh, that's not really that important for me at the moment I just want to ride as much as I can and gain my experience level a bit more because I'm still very young so right now the money isn't that in art of course it is important to get the things going around because I'm still young so I don't have the big base around me so but the uh, the most important thing is that I get many rides and yeah. learn some more every time. I, I think it's a reasonable approach of yours. And I also uh, know that you uh, sacrifice for Speedway all the things because you, you've given up the school, uh, I read a couple of weeks ago. So it's over with you in school forever or you are just making a break? Oh, yeah, well, I finished uh, the ground school, you call it, in Denmark in end of july i think yeah probably around there and then i had a conversation with my parents and we oh that was a long time ago we decided that after after i'm finished with ground school i can focus 100 on speedway so uh so it's not completely or if if i want to get a further education in school i can do that whenever i want but uh That's just not the plan for me. I just want to do this uh, all the time and uh, that's where my full focus is. Yeah, I think it's nothing normal for that we know from Poland because in Poland you need to go to school and, and until you are 18. But if you got this possibility, that's probably good for you and your career. And yeah, we were also talking several times about your, your family. Um, if you have a brother-in-law, you must have a sister also. And uh, was she also trying to, to ride Speedway? Because there are many girls in Denmark who, who tried Speedway. Yeah, she rode a few years ago just for just for fun. Did one or two practices a year, I think. But uh, it, was, it wasn't that, that quite special thing for her. So she didn't want to continue. Or I think she likes riding, but now she got two sons. So the one is only one and a half months, so she haven't had the time to ride at the moment. So so they need to be a bit older, I think, then she wants to ride a bit. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe she and maybe maybe your uh, family, so the children of, or, or of your sister, maybe they will be also riding, who knows? That would be a third generation of Andersons. Probably, yeah. I think the, the oldest one, he's quite hooked to the sport already but uh, I will see it, does, it doesn't matter what they do just as long they're happy I think for my opinion You are still very young Mikkel and uh, I think you are still having apart from your father some role models in Speedway and who would it be? Who who would you would you like to be like in 10 years? Well, that's that's, oh, that's hard to say I've always looked a bit up to Greg Hancock because he also help, helped me much uh so but just but there's because there's just a difference because uh, after like me and greg's height are just not the same so i can't have my riding style as the same as he has but uh, 
Oh, he he's a good a good uh, helper, and I can uh, learn very much from him. So, uh, and just he's just a regular nice guy. So, I don't want to be like a guy that's too arrogant to be. I'm just I want to speak with everybody, and uh, I'm just happy all the time. That's what I'm quite known for in the pits. So uh, that's what we try to keep on. And are you also watching some some other sport disciplines? Not that much. <laughs> Obviously, I'm quite hooked to this uh, this sport, so it's probably just almost speedway twenty four seven. But uh, no, uh, obviously, I like I like the boxing sport as well. Look a bit into that and uh, motocross side of it uh, also. That's also what I do here in the winter. We have a bit of fun on on the motocross bike, so uh, it's a uh, it's only in the winter time. I like watch the motocross and the, the boxing because in the season I don't really have time to focus on anything else. We are fully focused on speedway. That's really, really uh, impressive, I have to say, now, because uh, young guys like you are also known for, you know, playing PlayStation on Nintendo or doing some online stuff uh, and not just focusing on one sport. It, it must play some role for you. You, you know, you, you cannot be focusing 24-7 on Speedway only. Almost. I have a bit of a... I like my family time when I'm just around, but I I don't do none of the PlayStation and stuff. I, just, I've, I think it was two or three years ago I threw it all out because I don't want to, it to distract me at all. So, so now it's just Speedway all the time. And then almost, yeah, when I'm not in the workshop, I'm with my family. So all training, that's what I do. So if you are so connected to your family, you're probably not thinking about moving to Wrocław or to Poland generally next season. I uh, probably not next year. I don't think I'm. I think I have to be a bit more mature because I'm still so young. And it's if I have to move to Poland, I will obviously want to have my driver's license first because it's quite hard to go around if you don't have <laughs> have a driver's license. So. It would make life a bit more easier if I have one before I move. Right. Yeah, so it's similar like in Poland. Like you need to be 18 to get a driver's license in Denmark, yes? Yeah, but you have one in Denmark. You can be uh, 17 and then you have to drive with a parent that has had a driver's license for over 10 years uh, and don't have like a big ticket or something or something like that so so that's that's what you can do from your 17 to 18 but then you have to drive with a parent or somebody that's had driving experience for more than 10 years so yeah i think it's similar to a german system i kind of remember it from germany that they do something similar as well Good. Uh, Mikkel, uh, now we are after the season and we also said that you are training for, on motocross, you are doing uh, boxing and so on, but you must be thinking also about some kind of holidays. Uh, are, were you thinking about this already? Do you have some plans? Are you flying somewhere or you are just focusing on your job until March? No, um, I don't I don't go on holidays. It's just uh, I, have, I like my family time here back home and then... I can go down and see my sister and uh, her kids and family. So that's that's a bit more what I'm towards to and then just working hard for next season. That's the plan for now. Yeah, we, we are sure that you'll be working hard, but maybe is there something that I need to wish you for the next season? What 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 are your wishes? What are your expectations? Obviously, I want to go to the SGB2 again because it's a huge uh, opportunity to uh, do something special again but uh, it could be it could be fun to win the world title next year on uh, as a 17 year old but uh, my hopes aren't that high for that because there's some good riders in the lineup for the whole season but uh, obviously I want to have a solid season and uh, make my point once again that I'm not here just to have fun also I mean business sometimes but uh, even though I'm just smiling all the time and having fun doesn't mean that I'm to play with so uh, 
that's that's sort of what I have to try to do again. Right. So this is this is what what my wishes are for you for, you for the next season. And thank you very much for uh, for joining this interview today. And yeah, I wish you a nice evening. Thank you very much. Dziękujemy bardzo. To była kolejna rozmowa La Banda na portalu po bandzie. Ja nazywam się Krzysiek Sałaga, a moim gościem był dziś zawodnik, jeszcze nie do końca może betard z Wrocław na przyszły sezon, Mikkel Andersen. Thank you, Mikkel. Thank you.